Oh, well guys, it's been chaos as usual. So, this is the one I did that. So, last weekend, I worked through the weekend to get this guy going. We resealed the front structure. So, all you got to do on these is pull the hood, pull the radiator, pull the outer cover, wet your cams, pull your cam gears loose, pull like your air compressor on this CM870. You pull the air compressor, then the little module. These have an air operated VGT turbo on them. So you got to pull the little module that controls the air operated VGT off the bottom. And then uh, pull your alternator and stuff like that. And that accessory drive bracket off. And then you pull your uh, jack up your supports your engine. And then pull your front inner cover off, right? You know, and just put a gasket on it and reseal it. So that's all we did to it. We just resealed it, you know, and put it back together. And um, anyhow, he uh, he made one load to Reading that night, and then he came back and got another load to go to Yuba City, which is like five hours from here, I think, four or five hours. Well, he got back empty, and he started overheating. Well, long story short, I had to go get him, and the thermostat stuck or like the halfway it was this thermostat was stuck halfway on it we put a thermostat in it we wound up having to drop his trailer and then he was right on dunsmere grade there up on i-5 and we had to bobtail it back and he he was <laughs> so we were sitting there that night and you could get it around 1500 rpm with the cap on the the overflow tank and it would just start shoving the the water out the the overflow and i said i told him right there on the spot i said you got a bad head gasket you've blown the head gasket i think that you got her too hot with your thermostat problem and see that's a big problem with a lot of these guys they think they can just keep dumping water in it and keep going oh then they end up getting the head gasket when he probably when it started getting hot on him he should have pulled her over and shut her down that should have been it but uh it is what it is now we gotta so what happened is he he we got back that night to hear bobtailed and he was just he said i don't think it's a head gasket i think it was just that thermostat it's not getting hot now i said well you're bobtailing you're not loaded and anyway <laughs> he decided to go try to make another run with it the next day and got down to the scales in dunsmere and uh he got red tagged for something and this don't don't get me wrong this guy's a good guy but he's just trying to he's just trying to make some money you know and he didn't want to he just didn't he said i just didn't want to believe it he said i should have just stopped and uh anyway he shut his truck off fixed whatever problems they had found when they red tagged him and then he came back out and he goes, it don't want to start now. It's like, like it's locked up. And I said, yeah, your head gasket's blown. Now you've got water on top of the piston. I said, don't try to crank on it anymore. You're going to bend the rod. I said, he goes, what do I do now? I says, call a tow truck. <laughs> so, I mean, we already had the son of a bitch up here yesterday. And you wouldn't have had to have a tow bill. Now you got a tow bill involved. Ah, so that's what we got going on so what we're gonna do on it i got to get the hood back off i'm gonna get the hood off of it and then we're gonna start pulling injectors out and then see if we can turn it over by hand get the water off the top of the cylinder <sighs> so you guys remember the 6170 m john deere that i rebuilt the engine in last winter quite a story behind this tractor I'm walking here because I want to show you. So I rebuilt that engine, sent it to the customer. Customers ran it for, I don't know, months. Did all their fall or spring farming with it. And we're, you know, really happy about the whole tractor. You know, man, it sure runs good. Well, after I'd given it back to them, they said the check engine light was coming on. And can I come out there? you know and and look at it well there's a sensor that goes here's the here's the intake hose that come off that tractor this hose goes between the air cleaner and the turbo well there's a intake air temperature sensor and uh it's kind of like a mass airflow type deal right in here 
Well, one of the wires was broke on it, and I fixed it. And, uh, hi, Joes. I fixed it. Hi, honey. Let me put my coffee cup down. Hi, I know you got the wiggles. You got the wiggles. You want to be petted. I know, I know, I know, you crazy girl. So anyway, I fixed the wire, and then I noticed over there that we had a coolant leak. And I told the owner, the owner of the tractor actually was came up riding on his four-wheeler. He was moving some irrigation that morning. And I showed him the wire that was broke, and then we were standing there looking at everything, and I said, we got a leak on the coolant overflow tank, and it's got a crack in it up here. He says, well, I'll get my guys to change that. Well, that was in the spring, and anyways, later on that fall, here about a month ago, they were digging garlic. And I was actually over working on a 6125R that they have that this was having CAN bus error problems and the monitor, the right hand console, the main monitor was locked up. Well, I had that 6170R in here that had the same monitor. I took it over there because I thought the monitor was probably bad in that tractor and that's what it was. And they said, well, while you're here, go look at this 6170M. He said that it blew a fuel line or something off and Martin changed the fuel line and now it don't wanna, it don't wanna run. Well, anyways, a lot of the newer John Deere's, they, they, uh, they, uh, oh shit, I didn't even show you. They, they, uh, on the fuel side, John Deere still has those bleeders. The old 6400s and 6410s had, had bleeders on the pressure side of the lift pump. Because a lot of the older John Deere's, the lift pumps were actually, you know, some of them were in the tank, then they moved them to the frame rail, but a lot of those filters were on the pressure side of the system. Well, uh, all these newer tractors, there's a lot of the filters that are on the suction side of the lift pump. So when you start cracking those bleeders that John Deere hasn't got rid of on their filter heads, all you're doing is introducing air into the fuel system. Well, he had every about every hose you could think of on backwards and had every bleeder on the suction side of the fuel system on you know opened up sucking air into the tractor so i straightened all that shit out got everything pumped back the way it was supposed to be and i finally got to cranking on it oh and that's the other thing i couldn't i had to come back another day because i couldn't even crank on it because he had the batteries dead and he had cranked on it and fucked with it for so long that he had to start a ruin it was just dragging so bad it wouldn't hardly turn over with two pickups and my truck jumping on it so I said, get a starter and batteries for it and tell that guy to stay the fuck away from the tractor. Don't work on it anymore. Just stay away from it. So I come back the next day, we get starter and batteries, get it in there and get to spinning over and it starts up and it's got blow by like a son of a bitch. I mean, bad blow by. And I was like, what happened? This is a new engine. And I walked around the tractor with the hood up and I looked over here at this hose. Well, and this hose had a lot more duct tape on it than what you see now. There was duct tape wrapped all around this hose. And this hose was split and broke right there. And then it's got a huge... See, that's a, that's a crack all the way down here. And half of this, and it's, it's broke right here. And, you know, and I... I called the owner and because that's see that's the thing when when I told you part of the story when I went out to fix the wire this hose was not like this this hose was not like that when I went to fix the wire so in other words it wasn't like that when I rebuilt the engine somebody pulled this hose off between now and then and we figured the only thing we could figure is they were trying to get in there when they changed that coolant overflow tank and they ruined this hose and that was their solution, was duct taping the hose. Needless to say, then the monkey didn't tell anybody. He didn't tell the owner of the tractor that he had fucked the hose all up and had it duct taped. So then he's out there with a, a flail mower out in a garlic field, chopping the tops off, which is really, really dusty, dirty job, sucking dirt through the whole engine, through a brand new engine. You know, I mean, the, the, the intellect of this guy just blows my mind that you would do something like that and basically he ruined that new engine you know and and i i the owner the owner's got the tractor back out there and he said i guess we'll rebuild it again he says but i'm selling it this time i said well 
I don't think he liked what I had to tell him. I said, I said, I don't know if I'd be getting rid of my tractor. I'd be getting rid of the guy that fucked it all up. That's 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 what I'd be getting rid of. But that's just up to you. Well, I had the valve cover off when I wedged the cams the other day to pull the front cover off, and there was no, there was no rust and shit on the uh, and none of this shit the other day. So that shit happened, and it. Uh, Pretty obvious to see there's a There's definitely a head gasket issue going on here or a head problem, so So I know what to do um, I'm trying to think this through here um, I'm trying to remember this is not a common rail This has an injector cam and man that don't look so good either look at that the way that's they don't look so great. <laughs> that doesn't look so great to me. That way that cam looks and stuff. Ah, oh, this guy. These guys buy these used trucks and they're just a bag of goods, man. I'm telling you. They're just junk. Um. Yeah, I need to pull... I guess just zip the rockers off of them right now and just get them off. Get the injectors out of it and then uh, I can't even wedge the cams until but it won't hurt it. I can pull the rockers off of it but I can't. I gotta get the injectors out so I can turn it over so I can turn it to wedge the cams. So we gotta get the rocker shafts off. Well, I'm going to turn it over by hand, see if I can get some of the water out of number three cylinder. Get it to turn over, that way I can get my everything locked in time. Get the cams wedged. Definitely, she's turning over now. That's a good thing, huh? Let's see here if I can see what we got going on. Six, where's number? I'm gonna go ahead and turn her on over because I can't get injector number four. Somebody stuck a different injector in this thing and it it's different. It doesn't have anywhere to get a hold of it to get it out. So I got the bolt kind of started in there and I'm gonna see if I can get it out with compression. Be number three cylinder. this one injector out of here there's nothing to problem was definitely on number three you can see the beaded up water there number three there's definitely where this area is where the problem happened gotta get this damn injector out here though how am I going to do that there's nothing to get a hold of to get it out what a goofy son of a gun somebody stuck in there well, we're moving along. We're pulling cam gears now. Let their camera stay right there. Probably not. Yeah, why would I expect anything else? I'll try to put her here, I guess. But this transmission cooler is in the way. Okay, I gotta get this here cam gear popped off. Is 
Is that it? Or do I still not have them lined up? No, that's not it. Damn it. Stay put. Alright, so where are we at? Where are we at? What set of holes I need, I believe. That one, I think. The injector cam gear has four holes in it, and this one's got three. There's multiple holes in the tool face. You just gotta figure out which one you need. And then just... It come loose. There it is. Okay. You can see all that bearing mount. I just had these off when I did the front structure. It's kind of crazy how the old head gasket popped on right after I got done with that. So we got that. Both cam gears are off. Now we gotta pull these plates, pop them out of there. Well, one cam cover out. Then I can pull the cam as well. Come over here and pop this one out. Okay, that's going to be like get this old camera up in here. That out of there like a soul. Like a soul. Let's now we'll roll them cams here out of there. Yeah. That injector cam is a heavy bastard. It's like lifting a crankshaft out of a small block Chevy. I think it might be actually heavier than a small block Chevy crankshaft. It's a heavy, as they would say over there across the pond, a heavy bastard. I need to make a game plan as to where I'm going with it. Maybe I'll move these over here and then I will lay them like this that way they don't roll off the bastard how's that sound and i could probably get rid of that get rid of that throw all this here and pretty soon we can start rattling on head bolts trying to get them out get that out of the way so that does not hit me in my testicles Okay, so I can pull. Let's see here. I got this condenser laid up here. I was trying to save anything I could save with this guy because I feel bad for him. You know, he's had one damn thing after another with his truck. So. Pull that timing wedge out. Pull that timing wedge out, and this cam should come out. Okay. Yes, pull out the cam shafts. Wiring harness in the head. The only thing you need wires for in these is the two Jake solenoids. Since the injectors are run off of the cam shaft. On these older ones, the newer ones are common rail. Um, 
God, I wish there was a better place to put the camera. Well, let's just go like a so. Start rolling this valve cam out. Slide that there cam out of that hole, would you? I think I still got a fuel line on the back to take it to. I like the way you handle your shaft. I like it. I don't know if the camera's picking up anything here that I'm doing. Position. Now I can probably get right here where my leg's going to be in the way where you really can't see anything then. Yeah, I guess I'll just put you on the tire or something. There's nothing magnetic back here in the hood to hook onto with the camera. Ah, oh, okay. I like the single overhead cam motors way better. I really do. They're quicker when you're doing these jobs. You can do a head job a lot faster on one. There's way more shit on these to pull off as far as I'm concerned. That IFSM and all that shit there is not on them. I gotta figure out where I'm gonna go here. How am I going to do this? I guess uh, I just don't want to fall off with it in my hand. Gently lay it here, maybe. Won't stay put. I can climb down here. Second set of hands in that situation would be ideal. proceed with the removal of the head bolts now that we can get to them because we got all the yeah uh, I got to get a bunch of this oil out of there that's another thing you need to do so well this one's pretty obvious as it was definitely the head gasket not the cylinder head the only thing that makes you nervous is it's on number three cylinder, so that tells you that that head lifted in the middle. So, got a straight edge that head at bare minimum. But you can see right here on the fire ring where the gasket didn't, the head gasket did not seal up anymore on the fire ring right here, and it went across right into a water port. You can see the trail there, plain as day. You see the black, and it's all carbon. See where the carbon starts here, comes over. 
And you'll see it on the other side of the head gasket too. It did it on both sides. You can see where it came in through here. And it might have actually, it might have actually, it's hard to say whether it came through the bottom first and then leaked across. I don't know. It looks like it to me, it looks like it both top and bottom just leaked across into here. And you can see it on the head as well. So I guess the next thing to do is determine liner protrusion. And in order to do that, we need to clean up the block deck surface completely and then start clamping liners down one at a time and checking them all. So yeah, we've got lots of cleanup to do. That's what we got to do next. So number three is where our problem happened. What do our pistons and liners look like? I mean, this son of a bitch here has got some rust in it, like it was getting some water ingested into it as well. You see what happens. You'll, you'll. I found over the years through just this thing called experience that if they get really bad and they flood that exhaust manifold with water, what will happen is that exhaust manifold will be flooded with water because of the head gasket issue and the water coming in on top of the piston if it's running. And if it ends up in the engine, ends in the right position where a valve is open, say the exhaust valve, you shut the engine off and it's on the exhaust stroke and that exhaust valve is open, all the water that's leaking past that and it's under pressure you know under the system coolant pressure system you know because you've got a 16 pound cap on this that water is going to come right out of there and it's going to flood that exhaust manifold with water then if there's a cylinder downstream with another exhaust valve open it'll run back into that hole too so more than likely seeing as these are companion cylinders this one was on was a little bit of water went past from top dead center compression and flooded the manifold and then this one here was up and on top dead center exhaust which was you know uh means that the, the exhaust valve was open and it probably went right into that cylinder and flooded it with water as well so something like that i mean it's that's just my thinking that i, I know that i know for certain that i've seen them with exhaust valves open and the water go back into another another hole so now we take the long process of cleaning the block deck surface up. I need to clean the cylinder head up as well. Well, this one's going to be a little bit more detailed than a head gasket. This liner, number three, has dropped. Spec is 7 to 12. Get this thing set back up where it was. Zeroed out. And I don't even have it clamped down and I'm out of spec. I'm at six thousandths right there. Almost seven. I'm a little bit below spec, even there. But you can come over to the liner next to it. Hang on. So you know that, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you guys. You can probably clamp this down. And I'm not going to even say probably, because I did it the other day. I was curious. I just sometimes I'll do these little tests myself. I thought, you know, after you pull a cylinder head off and you've had these liners in their squeezed down position for so long, with this giant cylinder head torqued down to, well, I mean, obviously it was torqued down to 300 foot-pounds and it was torqued down to 90 degrees past that. You know that some of a bitch was squeezed down there tight. So what I did the other day on that cylinder head on that ISX, I checked my liner protrusion on all six without them clamped down. And then I went back and put the liner clamp on it and squeezed them all down. And I can't, I got exactly the same reading as I did. Now, I can understand that when you put a brand new liner with brand new O-rings that aren't seated up and all that kind of stuff, you're going to have some squish. But with this thing sitting here with 400,000 miles that's been clamped in this state for that long, I'm going to tell you right now, that especially right now, I'm getting, you know, like right there, I'm getting six thousandths. So 
so there's no sense in really even proceeding as far as clamping it down if it's already out of spec not even clamped down what's the use you know what's the use of dicking around and doing all that so i'm going to clamp the rest of the block deck surface and then we need to get the pan off get at least this liner out and i want to get the part number off it and that'll tell me whether it's a 150 millimeter liner or a 152 millimeter liner so anyhow uh so we know we got to get all the liners out and then cut the counter bores on it and reset it and shim them up get them up to 12 thousandths where this high side of the spec is and uh anyway i got to go look at the stinger haystacker it's got some kind of brake problem on it <laughs> 